let's do something interesting today. Today, I'm going to talk about cooling a greenhouse, specifically cooling my greenhouse. Now, this is actually a two-part series. This first video, I'm going to discuss theory of what I'm going to do to cool my greenhouse and how I'm going to do it. The next video, which will come out tomorrow, will actually show me implementing the cooling apparatus and how it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the second most effective method I know of, most cost effective method that I know of for cooling a greenhouse. And that's a swamp cooler or an evaporative cooler. The cheapest method to cool a greenhouse, of course, is a shade cloth. But at this point, I don't want to reduce the sunlight. Where I live, we get an enormous amount of sunlight. It's dark until after 10 p.m. At, or not dark, but it's fully light until after 10 p.m. at night. And I want my tomatoes to grow big and strong. Simple thing. That's the name of this channel. And we've got piles of other videos on greenhouses and growing. You should check out after this one. One of the things that you can keep in mind about YouTube is if you actually hit like and subscribe on videos that you like and on topics that you like, YouTube will serve up other videos to you of a similar nature. So you don't even have to go looking for them. They're gonna show up on the right hand of the screen or they're gonna show up on your homepage. YouTube will do all the search work for you. So hit like, hit subscribe if this is something you're interested in. Now, I live about 60 miles north of Winnipeg, Manitoba, which is, as far as I know, the coldest major city in North America. That being said, although we do get down to minus 40 degrees here, this time of year, which is June, it does get hot as well. We've got a temperature warning tomorrow out that it's going to be upwards of 35 degrees Celsius, which is hot. In a greenhouse like mine, that can mean 45, 50 degrees or more in temperature, which is too much heat and can kill my plants. So I got to cool them down. My plan to cool them down, of course, is building an evaporative cooler. Water's free. Electricity on running a fan isn't much money. So this is an extremely affordable option while continuing to get full daylight all day long. So in this video, which is the first of two, tomorrow we're going to actually build the evaporative cooler. I'm going to discuss how I'm going to build it, a little bit about evaporative coolers, and uh, we're going to get into the details of the theory of how they actually work. So my options in cooling my greenhouse, the cheapest option, of course, is a shade cloth. But that being said, with a shade cloth, I don't want to reduce my light. I want more light because light makes plants grow, especially sunlight. So I was left with some other options. I could run an evaporative cooler, which is probably the most energy efficient way that I know of to cool the greenhouse. Well, it's, maybe it's second in energy efficiency. It's cheaper definitely than geothermal, but geothermal would be less energy efficient. That being said, I plan to do a geothermal system soon in the future as I own a resort here and I occasionally get excavators coming by. It's not that much money for me to rent an excavator for an extra day to put in a geothermal system. Run the pipes down eight feet, run them out a hundred feet. Pipes are cheap. Run that to a radiator with a small pump and I got an air conditioner that'll pump out an enormous amount of cool air all summer long. But I can't do that right now. And tomorrow, it's gonna get hot. So right now, I'm building an evaporative cooler. And my other options would be to put in an air conditioner, but that would suck out an enormous amount of electricity, which I don't want to pay for, or a heat pump, which again, won't use maybe as much energy as an air conditioner, but still will suck a lot of energy. And I don't want to be using a ton of electricity on this. I want to use simple systems. The channel's name is Simple Tech. You've got to use some simple technology. So when we look at humidity, this is actually a concern for an evaporative cooler. The lower your humidity, the better an evaporative cooler is going to work. So when I checked out the humidity on my greenhouse, my temperature um, gauge or app or whatever you want to call it, actually does track the humidity in my greenhouse. And in the hot of the day, I'm looking at around 30% humidity. So from what I've researched on evaporative or swamp coolers, this is allowing for a lot of evaporation to happen. I mean, it's, it's relatively dry. 
Swamp coolers tend to shut down at 60, 70% humidity, but when they're running at 30%, it's not bad. You can actually evaporate a lot of water. So looking at the temperature and the humidity graphs that I have for my greenhouse, we seem to be a good candidate to go forward with this. So why does a swamp cooler work or an evaporative cooler work? It's not just running the water through it because the water that you're running through a swamp cooler or evaporative cooler is room temperature. So how is that gonna give you any cooling? Well, the cooling is from a phase change. When liquid goes to gas, you have to pump in a ton of energy. Now, think about it like this. If you put a pot of water on the stove, it takes X amount of energy for it to go to 20 degrees to 30 degrees and the same amount or a little bit more energy to go to 30 to 40 and the same amount of time. So 30 to 40, 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70. I mean, you're pumping X amount of energy. In. But once you hit just shy of 100 degrees Celsius where it starts to boil, it stays there. And it stays there a long time as it slowly evaporates. It sucks a ton of heat, a ton of heat from the, what, your stove or whatever apparatus you're using to heat that bottle of water. So to take that heat means that heat has to come from somewhere and it comes from the air. So it cools the air, that is the actual cooling. So when you're using an evaporative cooler and the water is flowing through a sponge type apparatus, the water is exposed to more air so it can evaporate and with lower humidity, it will evaporate more, sucking heat out of the air, which is your cooling process. An evaporative cooler is a phase change cooler. Now, building an evaporative cooler, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hillbilly this. I bought a couple of evaporative pads that are used in um, different humidifier type devices. They weren't that expensive, but I'm not doing a huge evaporative cooler. I also have a solar pump. And the reason I like the solar pump is that it's only gonna pump the water when the sun's really bright. So if I have a five gallon jug of water and I use some PVC um, tubes that I'm gonna cut up and put them over top of my sponge-like material that I can trickle the water through, I should be able to, with this solar pump, circulate water through the sponge-like material all day long. And if I have a fan pushing air across that, hopefully I'm gonna get a phase change. And that phase change is gonna give me some cooling. Now, am I looking for massive cooling? Yes and no. It takes a lot of energy to cool down a greenhouse because that sun is gonna heat that greenhouse up something severe. But all I really wanna be able to do is maintain that greenhouse at maybe 35 degrees Celsius. When it starts getting above that, it's not good for tomatoes and other plants. So my goal is if I can make this work and keep the greenhouse at a maximum of say 35, I'm gonna consider this a huge success. So my evaporative cooler isn't gonna be all that big, but I have three fans in this greenhouse I can actually put evaporative coolers on. So when I multiply it across the three fans, and they are double fans, that's six fans pushing air across um, a phase change sponge. I'm hoping maybe that's gonna be enough. So tomorrow in the video when I build this, I'm actually only gonna do one, but I do wanna see, and I'm hoping we can see in the energy charts, how much it's actually gonna work. That being said, if we look at some of the other greenhouses that use evaporative coolers, they're a lot bigger than the ones I'm doing tomorrow. But the greenhouses are a lot bigger too. This is only a 200 square foot greenhouse. When we look at some of these other evaporative coolers in the pictures that you see, they're for a thousand, 2000 square foot greenhouses. So if we scale that down, we might be able to get lucky and get away with the smaller evaporative pads for this smaller greenhouse. At least that's what I'm hoping because it's gonna be hot and I gotta bring that temperature down. And I'm hoping not to have to use shade cloths. So in summary, tomorrow we're gonna build an actual evaporative cooler and we're gonna do it hillbilly style. We're gonna set it up fairly quickly with materials that I have around here. The only thing I really had to buy was the evaporative pad. 
and believe it or not my local hardware store actually had a few of them so and they were encased in metal which is really nice for running water through them so i'm going to cut up some pvc i'm going to chop up some wood i'm going to use a few screws and i'm going to use my well existing five gallon buckets and my solar pumps which are small they're not meant for huge amounts of water going through they're actually for um bird feeder or a bird bath but they do put enough water out that they'll work my one concern is i may have to have some sort of a switch so that if it pumps out too much water it shuts off the pump we'll get into this tomorrow on the build and see what i can do i'm thinking something that is float regulated that just turns the power on and off might work fairly well for that but you're gonna have to stay tuned and tune in tomorrow to see how we build our swamp cooler for my 200 square foot greenhouse see you tomorrow